Hello fellow Unreal Engine artists, designers and developers. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to harness the power of geometry scripts to create roofs for your spline structures. Not only roofs that follow the straight edges, but also roofs that follow more exotic curved structures as well. It'll be spread over a couple of parts, first of all showing you how to generate the roof and then showing you how to incorporate that into your existing spline wall system. So let's get straight into it. OK, so I'm going to split this video into two parts. In this first part, we're going to create the geometry script to generate the roof. In fact, it could also be used to generate floors as well. But I'll just show you the roof here and it should be obvious how to do the floor. In part two, we'll then add this geometry script to our spline wall system. So as you're creating your walls, you've got options to create roofs and or floors. So let's start off by creating a new geometry script. If you go into your Explorer and in your tools section where you've got your spline wall and the tunnel we built in the last video, let's create a new blueprint class and we're going to use the generated dynamic mesh actor because this is a geometry script and we'll call it GS roof. Okay, open that up. And the first thing we'll do is we'll create a spline that we can use in place of our spline wall system to test this out. So let's add here spline and we want the spline, not the spline mesh. And if you go into the viewport, let's just create a few points for this spline. So I'll just create a four point spline. So I'm just using Alt and drag and then I'll go to close loop here. And we've got a curved four point spline here, which we'll use to generate our roof. OK, do a quick compile, save just to make sure that's OK. And now go back to the event graph and we can get rid of the events that are already there. And if you go to functions override, we want to override the on rebuild generated mesh. This is like the construction script for the geometry script, uh, geometry script functions. So first thing we want to do is to promote the target mesh to a variable, which I will call dynamic mesh. We'll be using that throughout this script. And then the next thing I want to do is to convert our spline into a polypath that I can then create a polygon from. So to do that, what I need to do is to take our spline. Let's just drag this out with control. And if you drag off here, you can do convert spline to polypath. So that converts our spline into a series of vertexes and from this polypath we can create we can extrude a polygon so let's now take our dynamic mesh and do append polygon and you want the append simple extrude polygon and you see it takes a variety of inputs we'll add more inputs to this later on but for now, let's keep it nice and simple. Let's put in our, our target mesh from our dynamic mesh. And we'll leave most of these things as they are. We'll change them as we go through um, enhancing this. But what it needs is a set of polygon vertices. So if you drag from the poly path to the poly vertices, it offers to convert them to an array of structures. So it's converting the path into an array of 2D points or 2D uh, vectors. So we'll leave the height at the moment at 100. We'll come back and change that in a moment because we'll allow the user to change the roof thickness. Leave everything else as it is. Um, and let's, uh, let's actually see what this has done. So if we compile and save that. So just with these two simple commands, converting the spline and polygon, we should start to have the beginnings of our roof. So if we go back to modeling and let's drag this GS roof into the element here, 
or to the floor here and you'll see that we have something that looks like a polygon but it's quite rough and ready at the moment so there's a few things that we need to consider so the first thing and this might not be obvious is that the polygon expects the points to be in a certain direction i.e clockwise and if they're not clockwise it will generate the polygon inside out so i'll show you what i mean if i take this point here and move it over to the other side you'll see that it's uh it's looking very weird in terms of what it's generating almost like it's hollow so there's a way that we can we don't want people to have to change their spline walls if they've created them already luckily there's a way to flip it if it doesn't look right so if we go over to the GS roof and if you look at the primitive options here what we can do is we can drag off here and say make primitive options and there's an option here let's just move it over a little bit to flip orientation so if we flip the orientation it will change it from inside out to the normal way around so we want that to be a user um, editable boolean so let's convert that to or promote it to a variable and we'll call it rather than flip orientation we'll call it inside out make it public compile and save and we'll leave it as default as unchecked at the moment but now if we select this and you see we've got now inside out as an option if I click this it will generate it the right right way around so whichever way you've created your spline you'll be able to correct whether it's inside out or not by clicking on this box okay now the next thing is that you can see it's very it's a very rough polygon at the moment I've got a uh, curved spline and I'd quite like my roof or floor to be following that curve so if I go back to the geometry script you will see that when we're converting the spline to the polypath there are some sampling options here let's drag out from here and do make spline sampling options and you can see that there are various options here so by default it's sampling along the spline using this uniform distance so 10 samples mean there'll be 10 sides to this shape here so if you count that that is 10 sides there however I don't want it to be 10 sided or 100 sided or whatever I want it to follow the curvature or, or if this is straight I want it to follow the straight edges here so what we can do is we can change this from uniform distance to error tolerance and you can probably get away with leaving this at 1.0 what it will do is it will follow the spline um, but it won't over generate the um, polygons you'll see if, if you go into wireframe mode that on straight edges it won't generate lots and lots of different subdivisions so this will work quite efficiently um, if you do want more you'll probably find that this is fine but if you do want f uh, finer grained curves you can reduce this error tolerance down to get more polygon details so let's see what this has done if I compile and save come out you'll see now that we have got a nice curve on that shape and if we convert these to straight edges so I'll use shift T to convert these to straight edges you'll see that it works just as well so straight edges are nice and crisp but curved edges are also nicely filled out and follow the curvature of the spline perfectly and as we move the points around the roof is following the shape of the spline so this is the um, basic shape done but you'll notice that the material looks a bit odd what we need to do is we need to in the second half of the script we need to adjust the normals um, apply a material we'll probably have to do some UV 
a patching on it to make the material look right as the uh, shape changes and uh, and apply those and maybe change the UV scale as well or allow the user to change the UV scale. Okay, so let's apply a material to our roof. So if we go over to our GS roof, you'll see that there is a material option here at the moment. It's set to the world grid material. So let's change that to our good old friend, the damaged brick wall. And you'll see that it gets applied, but it really doesn't look right at all. It's stretched along here. Can't even see it at the top here. So uh, we need to sort that out in the next few nodes. So go back to your geometry script and let's get to the end of it here. And first thing I'm going to do is um, recompute the normals. So we've created this polygon. Let's make sure that all our normals are facing the right way. So we can do that easily by do recompute normals. That's one of the geometry script functions here. And then we can plug our target mesh in there. And let's save that. Come out here. And straight away, you can see that even though the UV scale is not correct, at least we are seeing the brick on the top there, although the brick on the side is very stretched. So next thing we need to do is repatch the UVs so that you get a uniform uh, look. And then we can add a UV scale parameter that allows the user to change how uh, large or small the bricks look or the material looks on the surface. So let's come back here and what we'll do now is we'll do auto generate patch builder mesh UVs. These are all things that are in the modeling tool. So you can always go and play with those first and see what those do. Again, let's put our target mesh here. Um, UV channel zero. I'm, I'm assuming this is a single channel and at the moment a single material uh, on this. And we've got some options here. That we can change if we want to so let's drag off here and do make geometry script patch builder options and you've got various options here in fact so you can expand it out and there's our there are a lot of options in here um, you can play around with these but i'll show you what uh, seemed to work for me i just did the initial patch count of 100 and minimum patch size of one and if we compile and save that You'll see now we have a uniform scale across the side as well. So it all looks as though it is the same scale, top and sides. And you will see the sides, especially if you want to overhang your roof. I'll show you in the next video how you can use scale to not just fit the roof on top, but also overhang it if you want as well. So the um, last thing we need to do is allow the user to change the scale of the UV. So what we'll do is we'll go back here and we'll again come out of the node and do scale mesh UVs. And again, don't forget to plug in your dynamic mesh from node to node. And if we split this into X and Y here, we want to create a new parameter. So let's uh, add a new variable here. We'll call it roof UV scale. We'll make it a float and make it public and editable. And then if you drag it into the scene here, we'll apply this to both the X and the Y. Compile and save. So we'll, we'll set the roof UV scale to one to start off with. And then if I go out here, I should now be able to change the scale. So at the moment it's one. If I do two, you can see that the bricks are getting denser there. And if I reduce it as well, 1.5, it's getting larger. So I now have control over the UV scale of the texture that I'm putting on there. Now there is one final thing we need to do that I should have probably done in the first half. At the moment, we've got a fixed thickness for the roof. I left it as a fixed value of 100, I believe. Now that should be under the control of the user as well. Anyway, it's quite easily fixed. Let's go back to our geometry script 
and here I've got the height set to a constant of 100. What we can do is make a variable. We'll call this variable roof thickness and maybe I'll make that the first one in the list. Make sure you, you make it public and editable. And now we have, if I compile that, we have control over the thickness of the roof. So if I want to make it a thin 20 unit roof, that's fine. If I want to make a really thick roof, I can do that as well. So pretty straightforward. I think you'll agree. It doesn't matter, again, as I said, whether you've uh, got straight edges or curved edges, it will follow them. It will follow them perfectly. And as you adjust elements of your spline, it will automatically adjust the dynamic mesh and all of the uh, material scaling as well. Now that's where I'll end this first part. In part two, I will show you how to add this to your existing spline wall system, um, including how to make sure that this is generated as a static mesh so that it shows up in your scene with collisions if you so desire. So stay tuned for that and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.